Past research has shown that the native stingless bee, Tetragonula carbonaria, is an efficient pollinator of macadamia flowers. Chris Fuller from Kinkin Native Bees has been providing stingless bees to Francis and Louise McGovern to help with pollination at their farm north of Gympie since 2006. The bees are very active uh, pollen collectors and they also have a very strong preference for macadamia pollen. Uh, you'll often see native bees working macadamia pollen even in preference to white clover which is often in flower in the orchards. Where honeybees you'll find a strong preference for the clover if it's flowering at the same time as the maccas. The native bees are nearly always in the trees collecting macadamia pollen. With the native bees, around 90% of the bees you see in the trees are pollen collecting um, and stripping. They've got a very strong preference for pollen collecting. The bees need a temperature of around 17 to 18 degrees before they can fly. They have to physically warm up to that temperature to fly and it coincides perfectly with our, our flowering times. The early and the peak of, of the main flower, the bees are very active. We're getting quite good results with about one and a half to two hives to the hundred trees. Francis and Lou have uh, around 40 of their own hives which are placed around the perimeter of the orchard at about 20 metre intervals. And then I bring in my hives and we run them up through the centre of the orchard. We place them ideally so they catch the morning sun to get up to that 17 or 18 degrees temperature. But we also want them to be shaded by about midday so they're not uh, getting uh, the hot midday sun. We try to get the bees distributed as evenly as we can throughout the orchard, so we do place a lot of single hives around. Look, I like to bring hives in when the early flower is out. What that does is give the bees a taste of the pollen. They're, they're aware that the macadams are, are in flower. It also helps to build the brood of the, the hive up coming out of winter. They've just gone through a long cold winter. It boosts the number of bees in the hive and then the main flower comes out. The hive has a taste of the pollen, their numbers are strong and away they go. One of the good advantages of, of having growers having their own hives, and there are a few who do it, is that um, the bees get well established in the sites where they are. That grower never needs to uh, be concerned about the availability of bees as competition for the hives heats up in, in the coming years. Some growers are concerned about the, the possibility of spray drift on to their hives if the hives are on farm permanently. While that is a concern, there, there are ways of trying to assist the bees during the spray time. Francis and Lou on this orchard, they will cover the entrance to the hives if they're spraying required during the flowering period. They'll just cover them up for the day, the following day, let them out. We don't believe we've lost any hives at all to, uh, to spray drift here. For the majority of, of um, a normal macadamia spray program, um, the bees aren't actually in, in the orchard. There's no flowers in the orchard, so they're, they're off in the surrounding forest. They're not going um, to be affected by sprays on the trees through, through summer and, and, and the peak spray season. We do need to be careful when we're placing the hives on a new site because when they take their initial flight, they'll realise they're somewhere new, do an initiation flight to reset their, their radar of where they are. So you, you need to be careful of not placing the hives too close together when bringing them in. Otherwise, you end up um, with what's called drift fighting, where bees who are trying to re-establish the side of their hive, if they, if they, they happen to go into a, a, a different hive, there will be a fight and you can lose some bees. So, just a little bit of, of care in, in, in placing them, um, just minimises the, the risk of that. Well, the hives we use, they're based on a design by a man by the name of Tim Hurd, who works for the CSIRO. Tim did some work in the 80s on box designs, which allow for the hive to be split in half. And what this does is allows us to propagate our numbers and build up extra boxes, which we can then distribute about the orchard. We've found that we can split the hives approximately every 12 to 18 months. What we're hoping to do with some new box designs is to speed that up to at least every 12 months, possibly up to twice a year is what we're, we're aiming for because we really need to build the numbers up of the hives that are available for growers and we're on the track to doing that. During that splitting process we were just talking about, if you do a messy split, if you break open honey and pollen pots release those smells 
The hives will be attacked by a few different pests. There's forehead flies and surfeit flies. The biggest one at the moment is the small hive beetle. It pretty much decimates a hive in a few days. You just need to be clean with your splitting and once that's re-established, it only takes then a few days for the bees to re-establish their guards at the entrance and then they can then defend themselves to the beetle. So if you're leaving the hives alone, they're, they basically can repel any pests that are coming at them. It's only during that management of the splitting program that you need to be a bit careful. There is a big pest on the horizon, which is the Varroa mite. It's more than likely uh, everyone believes it's gonna be in Australia within the next sort of three, five years, that sort of a time frame. It is gonna affect feral honeybees and hived honeybees to a fairly big extent. The management of honeybee hives is gonna intensify. We believe the Varroa isn't going to prove to be a problem with the native bees as they're very similar species of bees to our natives that coexist in, in Asia and the other parts of the world that already have the Varroa and they're not affecting those bees. It costs at the moment uh, between $70 and $100 per hive for the flowering period. I myself rent for the duration of flowering. There are other native beekeepers who rent on a weekly basis. Depends on how long the, the grower likes them. I, I leave them on farm basically from early flowering right through until uh, the end of September, first week in October. The price depends on the number of hives a grower is looking for and how far we need to transport those hives. Francis and Louise McGovern farm just over 3,000 macadamia trees covering 14 hectares at Ganalda, just north of Gympie. They have won several awards for their excellent yield and quality results. In 2012, they won the Australian Macadamia Industry State of Origin Award for the top small grower and also won the overall award. Francis and Louise attribute much of their success to pollination with native bees. Uh, about 12 years ago, we uh we started using them. We bought six hives from uh, Russell Sable just to see if it made any, uh, any difference. And we could see uh, within the first 12 months of the first flowering that there was a difference in that particular area where we had the native bees. So every year from there on in, we uh, started to split. And it's taken a while, but we're up to approximately 40 hives. We've just noticed a massive difference in our um, pollination and uh, you know nut set and so forth. There's, there's not a lot of work in manage them, it, there's a fair bit of work in making the boxes, a fair bit of work in getting the, the proper stands. We went away from just sitting them on the ground to putting them on iron posts, a lot easier to manage. We go around them once, probably once every three to four weeks and check and make sure that there's not too many cobwebs or spiders and things on them and we wipe them off. There's not a lot of work in keeping them but there's a fair bit of work in trying to get them uh, up and running, you know, when you first start. Uh, Louise and I have found that by having the native bees on the orchard yourself, you're not relying on people to bring them in or the availability at the time. Now the greatest benefit, we've gone from growing around about 45 tonne a year to up to 65 tonne or 3,000 trees. This year will be down a little bit, I'm not blaming the native bees for that, I'm blaming the climate mainly. Only talking 5 to 10 per cent down. The quality going through the factory is, you know, second to none now we've actually physically had it, whether or not it's getting the sprays on properly, but I still firmly believe it all comes back to native bees. The need for pollination and the role of different pollinators in macadamias is a subject that is often debated. Francis and Louise McGovern have worked closely with Chris Fuller to ensure they have a very active population of native stingless bees in their macadamias during flowering. They have achieved excellent results and believe that the native bees have played a major role in improving their productivity.